So I'm on the bus and I'm heading into Central Paris. And of course, I always want to um, multitask <laughs> to the extent possible. So I was thinking about Harry and Meghan's trip to Nigeria, which I believe has come to an end. So they should be on their way back to to um, Los Angeles today. And um, I thought that the trip really highlighted Nigeria's best in a way that was very unexpected for me as someone who has never visited Nigeria or any other African country. I mean, you know, my whole education about Africa throughout my life until my recent, you know, own revelations and, and research was that Africa is this place that's sort of filled with poverty and illiteracy and people without shoes and, you know, just hungry people and malnourished and, you know, all of those very sort of negative and stereotypical things, you know. And I just want to say kudos to Harry and Meghan and the people of Nigeria for, for this trip because it really, you know, I think shed a light on the propaganda that continues to proliferate about Africa even today. You know, what children are being taught, you know, the Snyville articles and the you know, textbooks about, you know, Africa, African people, even today, children have the image of Africa and African people that has been intentionally spread by the West, by educators, by people in power, by people who know better. They have been to Africa, many of them, they know better, right? But they continue to spread an image of the entire continent and everybody in it that is not accurate. It's not accurate. That's not to say that there aren't people there who don't have shoes, who are hungry, who are poor, who have, you know, extended stomachs for malnutrition, etc., etc., etc. All of that is there. But there are other things as well. Who knew, for example, that Nigeria had a polo club since 1904. I mean, think about that. <laughs> I was stunned by that, right? Um, so I would say kudos to Harry and Meghan for this trip. And, you know, also the, the summit she went to for women leadership in, in Nigeria was something that was really great highlighting that the World Trade Organization, the head of the World Trade Organization is Nigerian, among other things. I mean, I think that the trip really put the spotlight on the country in a very positive way. And, um, you know, I, I think it's important that people see that see those images, you know, that there are countries in Africa and places that are very affluent, sometimes more affluent than the people in the West who are calling them poor, you know. I mean, I live in the West and I'm poor, you know, and um, I'm sure that there are many people in Nigeria who are thousands and thousands of times more financially, you know, healthy than I am at, at this time, and many others in in the West who who are taught, who are taught that you know everybody in Africa is poor and blah blah blah. So, look, I think it's great, and that's really all I wanted to say in this video is that Harry and Meghan have really shed a very clear and positive light 
on another Africa, the other face of Africa, you know, of people thriving, people living well, people having the best of the best, and, um, you know, it's refreshing. Anyway, see you in the next one. Take care. Bye. By the way, the other thing about the Nigerians is... <laughs> Say what you want about the Nigerians, but these are not stupid people. These are not stupid people. So you know how at the beginning of this project, if you will, where Harry and Meghan announced they were going to Nigeria, immediately in the UK, the media drops a few articles about a diplomatic incident saying that you know, diplomatically, how can Nigeria do something like this, right? You know, Nigeria is a member of the Commonwealth. I don't know why, because they pay big bucks for the pleasure. And I'm just like, why are you still doing this? You're a huge country. Why are you paying these people to be a member of the Commonwealth? What does that mean? What's in it for you? But that's a different question, right? So the way that Nigerians avoided any discussion of diplomatic incidences that would justify them going in with their friends you know in a year or so and taking out the government on the pretext of corruption or whatever they cook up because they're very good at cooking things up the nigerians just kept their leader the president of nigeria prime minister i don't even know what he is at this point oh he she he or she just kept her or him out of it completely. The Sussexes only met with the military personnel, not with the political leadership as in the president of the country. So there's no way for the Brits and their cohorts to use this as some kind of pretext later on against the Nigerians, right? This was not an official royal tour. This was not an official state visit. The president of the country did not participate, right? This was all about Invictus, right? This was a military, um, a military event. And that's it. This is how the Nigerians dealt with that. I'm just like, clever, clever, clever.